Have you ever wondered what it's like to buy a vending machine and start a passive income business? Well, I know I did, and that's why me and my college roommate one year ago bought a used vending machine from Craigslist and started our very own vending machine business. And let me tell you, there's a lot more that goes into a vending machine business than you might think. So if you're interested in finding out how much we made and the five things that you must know before starting a vending machine business, then make sure to stay tuned and watch until the end. Hey, what's up guys? My name is Chris and welcome back to another episode of The Lifestyle Design Show, the number one place for young adults to learn about personal finance and entrepreneurship. Today, I'm gonna to be telling you all about my very first business venture, our vending machine. So about a year ago, my college roommate and I, we started watching a lot of YouTube and we started seeing videos of people making bank by buying vending machines, filling them up with inventory, and then putting them in a location. People buy snacks from you and there you go. You're, you're sitting pretty. $121. That's a lot of snacks. A lot of snacks, woo. So now it's over a year later and we've learned quite a few different things about this kind of business. So here are the five most important things that you must know before starting a vending machine business. And the number one thing, you wanna have a location before buying your machine. I've heard quite a few stories where people will buy a vending machine and then they'll have to store it in their garage for six months while they're trying to call places and trying to say, hey, do you guys need a snack machine? For us, when we started our vending machine business, we put it at a ranch. And so even though we had a location that wasn't our ideal location, we were trying to find other spots and we were calling and reaching out to many different places. Pitch our vending machine to a local housing community by the college we go to. But the problem is we print all these graphics out and we put the wrong email address. Stay tuned. But unfortunately, we never found one. And so that's why picking your location ahead of time, making sure they need the machine, and also analyzing the traffic they have. Because getting a good location is such a big part of this business. It really is. Hey, have you guys ever used a vending machine before? If you have, make sure and destroy the like button for the YouTube algorithm. <laughs> The second most important thing that you have to know before starting a vending machine business, don't put a snack machine where a drink machine should go and vice versa. We made this mistake and that's not properly analyzing your market. Before, before you buy your machine, look at where you're gonna place it, yeah. research the audience. If it's the right area for a drink machine, just put it there. And because of that, our sales were impacted. Our weekly sales were only about two to five people every single week. And we'd be lucky at the end of the month to have made $10. People are at a ranch, they're riding horses, they're hot, they're gonna want something to drink, they're gonna be thirsty. No one wants to buy warm snacks. It's best to be prudent before purchasing your machine and get the correct machine for that location. We went with snacks because snacks seemed the easiest and the snack machine was a little bit cheaper. We could have made a lot more money if we had properly analyzed the market and had gotten a drink machine. Oh well, you live and you learn. Number three, make sure that you understand the startup costs. It's gonna cost anywhere from $500 to $1,000 to start a vending machine business because to buy a new machine, machines cost anywhere from five to 700, depending on what kind of machine and how old it is. And then to fill it up with inventory, so snacks and drinks, it's also gonna cost you around $100. For us, we split it between two people, so overall we were only out of pocket about $300 each. But for someone starting this business up by themselves, remember there's definitely startup cost for this business. The fourth thing that you need to realize about vending machine businesses is that it's not passive income. And you know, this was a perception I had before starting this business. I thought that it would become passive once you know you purchase the machine and set it up that the initial time investment would eventually turn into a passive investment. You know, people just bought snacks from you and then you collected the cash. Unfortunately, that's not the case. With vending machines, there is a lot of labor involved. Not only to actually buy the machine and you know pick up the machine and have to move it to the location, which is really hard. I mean, these machines are ginormous. They are so big and they're heavy. But more than that, there's the restocking. So whether you restock every week or every other week, that takes a lot of time. There's also cleaning the machine. You have to clean the glass. There's also problems with the money collector. Sometimes there'll be jams. There's just so many little things like this that make this business model not passive at all. Overall, it was just a lot more tedious labor than we really ever could expect. I mean, we thought we were gonna make it rain. Dude, this crisp, these crisp cash, this is what we thought we were gonna get when we started this <laughs> business. It's a cool feeling to have a business that is so situated around cash. 
And we never got a credit card reader. This is a little bonus tip. It's really important if you wanna increase your sales, people are focusing more and more on cashless transactions. Credit card readers are a couple hundred dollars, so they're just another investment into the business. But yeah, definitely pulling in all this cash was not the case. We made around $90 in total sales. So eventually, we did sell the machine. Goodbye vending machine. <laughs> And we did actually sell the machine for a slight but profit because we did upgrade the machine a bit, we added locks. So all together on our initial investment of about $600, overall we profited about $40 or maybe about $20 each. It was an amazing learning experience and I'm just happy that we didn't actually lose any money. In fact, we actually profited. So overall, I'd say this is a win for a first business loss. And the fifth thing that you have to know before starting a vending machine business is it's much harder to scale this business than you might expect. We had really high hopes when we first started this business and we planned to scale at a rate of about 10 machines per year. But the problem is scaling is so much harder than you might think. Scaling involves a lot of labor. These machines are big, they're heavy, they're cumbersome. You have to have trucks, you have to find locations to put these machines. Each machine needs to be serviced and restocked. It's just there's a lot more that goes into this business on the back end than you might realize, and it just stops you from being able to scale to the proper level. We did the math, and we believe that one machine should profit you when it's in a good location, about $1,000 per year. So we were hoping that at 10 machines, we'd be bringing in about $10,000 gross and about $5,000 net when you subtract all the inventory costs. But the thing is, is that dream never came to fruition because scaling this business just comes with a hurdle of obstacles. $20 worth of like quarters and other change that was just caught in the machine. What? That's, so that's why it wasn't functioning earlier. There, I mean, there's fixing the machine, making sure the machine looks nice, yeah. cleaning it off, um, restocking, making sure it has enough change in it to make change. True. Making sure there's no like, like jams, yeah. jams in uh, in the coin um, coin feed. There's so many problems uh, that can that can happen. Like yeah. we, another thing that happens, we had Capri Suns <laughs> in our vending machine, and some of them would like pop, the, the shelves would get sticky, which mm -hmm. is just another unforeseen, you know, little like thing that we had to deal with. Just so. a small little issue. Yeah. So eventually we really came to the realization that this business model was not the model for us. It was just too labor intensive. And as two college students, we just didn't have the free time that we would need to invest into this business. The great thing is we were able to chalk this up to an awesome learning experience. And all the snacks, although they did expire, we were still able to eat them and enjoy them ourselves. So how would I rate the vending machine business on the side hustle scale of one to 10? Well, I'm gonna give the vending machine business a 5.875. The pros of vending machines are that they're always in demand. We actually did quite a bit of research when we were making our business model, and it shows that vending machines are getting more and more popular. You're seeing vending machines for different kinds of products, different items. You see sneaker vending machines, clothes vending machines, you know, athletic vending machines. There's so many different kinds of vending machines, and so this industry is gonna be around for a long time. Another pro about having a vending machine business is there are a lot of write-offs. You can write off the depreciation of your machine. You can write off the expense of the snacks and inventory. You can write off some of the gas expense that you had when you were traveling to service the machines. There are a lot of different perks that come with owning an equipment-based business like vending machines. Another perk is it's a tangible business. It's really fun to be able to say, I have a vending machine. It's tangible, you can touch it, you can feel it. It's just the overall fun business to be in. Another pro to a vending machine business is the fact that you can get free or discounted snacks and drinks. Even though we never touched our inventory while we were conducting business, we only broke into the snacks once they expired. <laughs> Another pro of this business is it just looks really cool. It's a little bit of a flex. You know, people love to see content about vending machine businesses. You can actually take them and visit your vending machine. Kind of a, a cool asset to have in your portfolio. Now, the cons are this business takes a lot of startup capital. And as college students, that was one of the main obstacles we ran into. This business required more and more and more investments to get another machine or to get a credit card reader or to get, you know, locks for the machine. Another down Side is it requires a lot of active work, it's not passive. Another downside is that things break. So we were able to figure out any problems that did come up, but 
when you're actually conducting business, there are so many things that can go wrong. Motors can break and little spinny things that eject the snacks might not spin or, I, you know, I don't even know, the coin collector could break. Another con of this business is that it's hard to get good margins on your sales. Most times our margins would be a little less than a dollar for each snack and item that people bought from us. That's not very good, you know, you have to make a lot of sales to make really any amount of money. So these poor margins are also something to keep in mind. And then lastly, this business is really, it's not scalable. It, it's really hard to scale it unless you make it your whole life and, and you really focus your time and energy on scaling your vending machine business. So overall, that's why I rated this side hustle as a high five, maybe even a low six, because some people will find some massive success. It all comes down to your location. If you have a good location and you analyze your market and you decide this type of machine is gonna be a huge hit in this kind of location, then you might make some serious money. But if you're a complete newcomer and you're trying to learn this business model by watching YouTube videos, I'd recommend maybe looking at a different kind of side hustle that you could do from home, you could do online. It doesn't require so much active work. It doesn't require so much capital to get started. If you're interested in learning some of my favorite side hustles that you could do straight from home, all from your laptop, make sure to go ahead and click right here and check out those videos. This is the study room that we actually planned all of our vending machine adventures. How many people could say that they owned a vending machine? How many people could say that in college they started a business with vending machines? It's just wild. You know, at the end of the day, we're all trying just to learn and do our best. And honestly, it doesn't hurt to try. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you next time.